Hello listeners, this video discusses The Deserted Village written by Oliver Goldsmith. Oliver Goldsmith was born in the year 1728 and died in the year 1774. He was an Anglo-Irish novelist, playwright, dramatist and poet. His best known novels are The Vicar of Wakefield which he writes in 1766. Next is his pastoral poem, The Deserted Village. He writes in the year 1770. His famous plays include The Good Natured Man in the year 1768. She Stoops to Conquer in the year 1771. That was performed in the year 1773. He has also written classic children's tale, The History of Little Goody Two Shoes. In the year 1765. Now let's see this poem, The Deserted Village. This Deserted Village is a pastoral poem which is published in the year 1770. Mm -hmm. The meaning of this poem is given in the title of this poem, The Deserted Village. The meaning of deserted is being empty. Yes, this poem talks about an empty village. Oliver Goldsmith creates an imaginary village named Auburn. So Auburn is the name that arrives in this poem. The poem opens with a description of the village. In the beginning lines of the poem, Oliver Goldsmith starts this poem like this. Sweet Auburn, loveliest village of the plain, where wealthy and plenty cheered the laboring swain. Where smiling spring its earliest visit paid, and parting summer's lingering blooms delayed. So many critics who have read the poem, they mentioned that Oliver has mentioned his childhood village, where he was born, where he was brought up. The name of the village is Lizoy, which is in Ireland, County Westmeath. This poem is written in heroic couplet. It has the rhyming scheme of AA, BCC. Oliver Goldsmith dedicates this poem to an artist, Sir Joshua Reynolds. This poem talks about the dispossession of the villages to America by giving up their farm lands to the rich people. The speaker of this poem is Oliver Goldsmith itself. He writes about his memories that he had in his village and when he returns back after many years, he sees the changes in the village that occurred in the village due to the new settlers arrival. So that is what the poem reads about. He is also cherished by his nostalgic memories. Let us see the characters included in this poem. First is Oliver Goldsmith, second is Reverend Henry Goldsmith. Reverend Henry Goldsmith is a preacher in the village. This character represents Oliver Goldsmith's brother. Next is a rich man. The rich man is projected as a tyrant. He is a cruel ruler who has complete power over the people in the village. Before we move on, we must understand that Oliver Goldsmith is bringing us the village that he lived in. Now, after many years, he is revisiting the village. So, he is bringing us the changes that he is experiencing after many years. The next character is a rich man who is projected as a tyrant. Meaning of tyrant is a cruel ruler who has complete power over the people in the country or a village. Now this rich man represents General Robert Napier. This man collects many lands from the villages and the village farmers for low co cost and he brings many industries to the village. And as days pass the industries pollute the village. Next character is a schoolmaster. He is a kind, intelligent person. His character represents Thomas Bride. 
Thomas Bright is a school teacher of Oliver Goldsmith. He is a knowledgeable person. His aim is to educate all the children in the village. He also turns his house itself to a school. Next character is a widow. This widow represents Catherine Grehati. This widow, she suffers due to Enclosure Act. Enclosure Act is the abolition of open field system. And this widow is the only person who retains in the land same as she was in the past when Oliver Goldsmith was a young boy. So even when he returns to the village, he can see this woman living the same life that she had lived years before. There are 430 lines in this poem. Next character is the England rulers. In his poem, Goldsmith criticizes the England rulers because they encouraged the sea trade and allowed foreigners to London. And due to this, many industries were introduced in London and those industries polluted the whole lands. And as Goldsmith begins this poem, he starts to describe the village. He says that, firstly he says that he comes after many years to Auburn and this arrival brings him nostalgic memories. He then talks about the weather in the village. He says the weather is perfect in the village. Spring comes early and summer prolongs for many days. And also says that the people of Auburn will be very happy and they are very humble. He talks about the farmers. The farmers are hard working. In their leisure time, they all gather near a big tree in the village. They also spend time in the green fields. They climb up the hills. They play sports under, a t under the same tall tree. They also dance and spend their time. They talk about what they did for the entire week. And the village has an inn. Meaning of inn is a bar. And the village has a bar. People gather to drink there and they discuss about the developments that happens in the village. Then Goldsmith talks about the lovers in the village who always flirts. And to see that it will be heartwarming for the villagers. The rich man who represents General Robert Napier, as I said, he collects the agricultural lands from the farmers. The farmers, for their betterment, they move to other places. So they move to America. They shift to America. Goldsmith's villages are pride of calling themselves as bold peasantry. The meaning of peasantry is small holders and agricultural laborers of low social class they are pride because they are happy with what they have but now after many years when goldsmith visits the village the village is deserted because people have moved to america he says at present the people in auburn move to city places they move to find wealth for their betterment. By this, the village becomes empty and decayed because many people have already evacuated from the village. Then he says that the village is not only empty but also with the people, the culture, their happiness and behavior, everything vanishes along with the people's disappearance. When Goldsmith arrives to the village after many years, he can imagine how the violent power of General Robert Napier has controlled the people. And his power has totally changed the entire landscape of the village. Now Goldsmith, he remembers the nostalgic memory. When he was a small school boy, when he returns from his school, he used to hear the noise of the watchdog shouting and women who are milking the cow, they sing songs and he used to hear the noise of geese and the sounds of nightingale and these memories is like a sweet confusion for him. But now when he looks at the village, he now sees the depopulation of people. Many people have 
gone out from the village and the village does not have any impressions of past happiness uh, as i said there is only one widow left in the village who lives with petty things that she gets from the village then he says about the people who have migrated from the village to america he thinks pities about them because the circumstance in america is not suitable for the urban migrants because they see many red indians there also there are many wild animals poisonous snakes scorpions bears added to this the climatic condition is not suitable for the urban migrants the people were treated like slaves and they were considered as laborers and the village people who have shifted to america deep in their hearts they wish to return to their happiest village auburn then goldsmith talks about the preacher who leads a loyal life in his modest mansion he only receives a salary of 40 dollars he says that the preacher has dedicated his life for the pain of people for soldiers for the people sufferers for the disabled and for the beggars he is very much concerned about the beggars problem the people's problem and also helps them whenever it's possible and if any fool arrives to mock at the preacher they turn to god they turn good out of hearing his preaching and next to the church there is a noisy school the school's headmaster looks strict and stubborn but he is a kind man with passion over teaching goldsmith then talks about the life that he had in auburn he says that life in auburn is like heaven but the life that he had in city is like hell because city is overcrowded it's a place for enmity and it's a place of wilderness where people will never help each other now at present whereas in village even if people get depopulated the birds sing happily animals and insects loiter happily but in city birds fail to sing and in city he can only observe that there are many dark scorpions then he admires the village and its lifestyle particularly the people in village are hard working and caring they show hospitality they are very faithful and truthful they never have greedy or they are not cruel unlike the city people and at the end goldsmith says that he is shameful for the changing mindset of the village people because as the new settlers have come into the village they have uh, gone apart they have dispossessed their own place they have gone to other place and settled there living a different life then at the end he bids goodbye and declares that he is moving away from the village and lastly he thanks the village for giving him fruitful memories which he cannot forget for his lifetime hope this video helped you if you have any query write it down on the comment section thank you for listening do not fail to subscribe this channel